Call to order the Charter Township of Oxford Board of Trustees regular meeting for Wednesday, September 11th, 2024 at 6.30 p.m. Uh, we'd all please rise and pay respects to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, Indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Noting of the roll. Noted. Okay, item four, approval of the agenda. I'll make a motion for the agenda as presented. I'll second that. I have a motion by Treasurer Ferrari, a second by Trustee Charles. Are there any questions? Hearing none, uh, uh, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, hearing none, we'll be on to item five. Approval of the consent agenda. I'll make a motion to approve the consent agenda with the following change. Under the agenda for the special township board meeting on May 2024, uh, the approval of the agenda should have right after the word clerk. Second. I have a motion by Treasurer Ferrari with an amendment, a second by Trustee Knoll. Are there any questions? Hearing none, roll call. Trustee Charles? Yes. Trustee Colvin? Yes. Trustee Kane? Yes. Trustee Knoll? Yes. Treasurer Ferrari? Yes. Clerk Wright? Yes. And Supervisor Curtis? Yes. Item number six, uh, public comment on items not on the agenda tonight. Uh, members of the uh, public can come up and have three minutes to speak uh, regarding any item uh, they'd like to talk about in the township, and they have three minutes to do so. I'll recognize the public. Yes, ma'am. Good evening. I'm Dawn Medici with um, Oxford Township Parks and Recreation, um, and I live here in, in the township. Um, I'm coming this evening to say thank you to um, the board and trustees for allocating the American Rescue Plan Act funds, the federal funds, for the Oxford um, courts, tennis courts, universal courts, pickleball courts. Um, coming in to, to say thank you because that um, uh, has been accomplished, the improvements have been made, and the courts are, they look beautiful. If you've not been out to see them, please come out to see them and it's quite busy um, every morning now um, and, and in the evening. And all ages actually are out on the courts using those courts now. So um, thank you for that. And then I'm, I would like to extend an invitation to all of you to come out to the um, park on Tuesday, the 17th at 10 a.m. We're doing a ribbon cutting with the chamber. And if uh, any of you can come out to attend that, it would be appreciated. Thank you. Thank you. Any other members of the public like to speak on items not on the agenda? Good evening, my name is Jeffrey Abbott, and I just wanted to say thank you guys for all that you do. I am on the uh, general election as a, as a potential trustee, so if I do get to join the board, I just wanted to say I'm looking forward to working with you all. Thank you much, have a great night. Thank you. Can everybody hear out in the audience? Thank you. Are there any other members of the public that would like to come up and speak on items not on the agenda? I feel really bad and stupid. Yes, ma'am. Come don't on know up. What the agenda is. Okay, seeing no more comments, we'll move on to Board of Trustee comments. We'll start with Trustee Charles tonight. Well, one thing, uh, Supervisor Curtis, I'd like to, if we could, find some way of having a moment of silence and recognition of today being a special day in American history, a somber day, 9-11. Is that something you would kindly lead us? Sure. Clerk Wright? 
a couple things. The Northeast Historical Society Museum, uh, Museum is going to be hosting a cemetery tour on Sunday, September 22nd. It'll be on the south side of the Oxford Cemetery. And it's uh, celebrating some of the people in the cemetery, some of their uh, accomplishments in Oxford and their, their legacy. And also the mausoleum is turning 100 years old. So that'll be open to the public if they want to come and look, see what's inside the mausoleum. Also, we are in the process of paving the north side of the Oxford Cemetery. So um, uh, Engineer Sharp's been uh, on that exercise for us to get us to actually uh, get that side paved. Finally, I just want to say um, uh, ballots for the election will be in at the end of September. Uh, we plan to send those out uh, that last week in September if you are signing up for an FCP ballot. And also, if you haven't and you want to, just come to the office. You can download these online as well. And if you are going to be at a different location than where you reside for the winter time, fill out the bottom of it so we can get your ballot to you at the correct address so we don't get a call that you didn't get your ballot if you don't fill this out. So. So if you need any more information, just contact the clerk's office regarding the elections. Thank you. Treasurer Ferrari. Uh, nothing at this time. Trustee Knoll. No, thank you. Trustee Payne. Um, as you know, I won't. I will be done in a couple of months, and so <laughs> I would like to recommend um, that the supervisor appoint my replacement for negotiating with the fire department union. Um, we're at a crucial point right now, and I'd like to bring that person in early for the next next round of negotiations, and kind of get that person some, so they can get some feel for the um, the job ahead of them. Okay. Thank you, Trustee Colvin. Um, I just want to let everyone know the DDA is decorating downtown this Friday, so starting at 10 a.m. If you want to help decorate downtown for fall. Just come on down and we'll put you to work. Thank you. Um, I just have a couple comments. Um, this year's gravel program, thanks to the road committee, we have done 21,500 tons of aggregate and we applied it to 13.37 miles of gravel road. I know last night um, uh, some people were thanking people for doing roads that haven't been done and 50, 60 years, but um, we spent tri-party funds from the county and through the township and uh, almost 14 miles of gravel roads. So the last two years now, we have re-graveled um, almost two thirds of our 40 miles of dirt roads. Uh, secondly, um, I was in discussion with Treasurer Ferrari and uh, Attorney Olin today and taking note that uh, Trustee Payne may be leaving early and with the uh, union negotiations taking place before our new members are sworn in, um, I would gladly fill in that position too since I did three contracts before with you. I'd, I'd fill in that spot. Okay. I'm not leaving early. I know. But what happens is, is we have an overlap between meetings, negotiations, right. and swearing in. So I said I would fill in in those positions. So we'll handle that one. All right, moving on. Um, item number eight. I'm, I move to open the public hearing at 6.39 p.m. to discuss the establishment of the Cedar Lake, Long Lake, and Hand Lake Special Assessment District. Your objections to the SCD petition. Sad project and the sad cost estimate. I second that. I have a motion by Treasurer Ferrari and a second by Trustee Charles. A roll call, please. Trustee Colvin. Yes. Trustee Payne. Yes. Trustee Knoll. Yes. Treasurer Ferrari. Yes. Court Bright. Yes. Trustee Charles. Yes. And Supervisor Curtis. Yes. Members of the public, now is a chance for you to step up uh, to the microphone and we're going to take public comment on Cedar Long Tan Lake Special Assessment District. You have three minutes to state your case regarding the uh, Special Assessment District. We welcome you to come up to the mic at this time. So, please identify yourself. And 
I own FPL, I own one, three, two, and beat. I have a couple of questions for you guys. How deep are the invasive weeds and what's the cost going to be? Because right now, as it stands, we've lost four days on the water and a lot of, a lot of dogs are getting ill because they just go under the water and they come out with rashes. I think mine does too, but I can't, I have to, have to have the treatment. So how deep are these weeds? Because I live in muck, so I don't understand where, you know, where the weeds are. And, and I just want to make one point. Uh, we're going to capture all the questions. We won't have a dialogue back and forth. Okay. We'll answer them at the end of the public hearing. All right. Well, that's, those are my questions for you okay. guys. Because uh, I guess that I live in muck, so I don't understand where the weeds are. See you. Okay. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. I'm Kimberly Reynolds. Is this, this is, forgive, forgive me, is this the same thing as what's going on with Claire and Squaw? Uh, we're, we're, we're all on the Stringy Lakes group, and we're, they're dumping chemicals in the lake. Is that the same, is that what we're under here? Yeah. Okay. So the chemicals that they're dumping in the lake, they are the last lady that came by in a hazmat suit spraying the lake, it's supposed to be a totally safe product, said she was only spraying copper, but I saw her pouring two different things in her, her pressure sprayer, and I asked her, I said, well, she's holding up the bag of copper, and I said, well, what's the other thing in the jug that you're pouring in? And she said, well, that's what makes it stick to the plant. What is it? She doesn't know. Apparently that's the not safe stuff. My animals have come out of the water vomiting. My neighbor's daughter, when they first started putting this stuff in the lake, a couple weeks later, she, after she went in, she had white spots all over her body that the doctors couldn't figure out. And now she's five years later, she's still got these spots all over her body. Nothing can cure it. And I think that it's, it's my, my sister's dog ends up with all kinds of skin issues when he comes out of the lake after swimming after the after days after the stuff has been dumped in the lake i have was told when they first started this that the purpose of them doing it was because their props were getting caught up in all of the weeds i i said no to it at that time i said let's harvest it they didn't want to harvest it because it costs too much money and you have to keep doing it this was going to not be a forever thing it was just going to take care of the alien weeds that showed up in our lake because of the boats being dropped in and the props not being clean and nobody being at the launch to monitor what's going in and out of the lake. So they, they did that. They also said there was no good place to put the harvested uh, lake grass. I recommended the huge boat launch that is sitting there empty all of the time, but for whatever reason, that wasn't a good place to put biodegradable natural grass. So they, against my will, I'm paying these taxes for toxins to be dumped into lake. I don't spray my grass. I eat organically, I don't smoke anything, I don't drink anything, of, I really don't drink much more than water. So for me, it's very disturbing to have an absolutely pristine spring-fed lake being poisoned with all of these chemicals being dumped in four times a year <coughs> that are literally, it says you can't swim. Why not? Don't, let, don't use it to water your vegetables. Why not? It's perfectly normal, healthy stuff. It's not gonna hurt anything. There's no evidence that it's hurting the dock or the fish because nobody's researching it. Nobody's done a count or a check on how many fish are in the lake or what's going on with the ducks. How long are they living? Are they tagged? What's happening to the babies? Nobody knows. They're just trusting that the people who are making the money off of selling this process are saying that exactly what everybody wants to hear, that this stuff is perfectly safe, so let's just dump it in the lake and take care of the, the weeds so that the boat props don't get, you know what? harvesting will take care of that. And I am still cleaning dead stuff up off the lake. Whatever it's killing, I have to rake it up and I have the stuff laying all over the front of my lawn. So it's still getting harvested. It's just dying and floating to the shore. And on top of that, now when the boats are out there, there's no lake grass to catch the dirt. So now the dirt's just spewed up all over the lake, all the water's filthy. You can't even swim in it. Um, Thank you. Hi. Hi. Mary Reynolds at 222 Um, I would just like to ask a couple of questions about the effectiveness of this. 
I'm wondering if there are pictures that would be proof of what had happened, you know, prior to this application, what it happened, you know, what it looks like after. I'd also like to do uh, ask a question if this, you know, where's the end of this? You know, I have my papers, you know, from seven years ago that said that this was going to be a seven year process, but it looks like it's going to be in perpetuity, okay? So those are my two, my two questions. Hello, I'm Yvonne Dudley. I live on 520 Maloney Avenue, Oxford, and I have a here so you can keep this. It's just some paperwork showing you what invasive to show you what invasive species we have. And I know the company, I'm not sure what company they have on the other lakes. I'm on Squaw Lake, well, now Paint Lake, but the um, company we have is PLM, and their, PLM is the largest company in Michigan, um, and they have been in business for 30 years. Their employees are mostly graduates from MSU wildlife and fishery programs. They do Lake Orion and Lakeville Lake, and other residents are very happy with theirs. Uh, I've been out here 59 years, since 1965. I've seen a lot of the changes, and it is pristine, and I understand that how Kim feels about having pristine lakes, and it was wonderful back then. Unfortunately, now we have all the impact of more homes, more boats, and it's waterfowl, too, that bring in the invasive species through their feces. So it's not just through the boats and all that, but um, the chemicals that PLM uses, all the products are used in aquatic weed treatment, have been approved by the state of Michigan, DEQ, well, Eagle now, and uh, they do a quality monitoring, which includes E. coli, dissolved oxygen, conductivity, total dissolved solids, pH, and alkalinity. Reports are issued annually in the fall. So the company that the Pan Lake and those have, I'm not sure if they do that for you, but I hope and pray that you can request that from them, that you want to report and have them give you the water qualities that's going on. And as I shared that the weeds are going out of control, we don't have the winter ice anymore like we used to that slows that growth. So now they're really just extremely growing fast. And then if we don't have the companies that are doing the aquatic weed and people will take it upon themselves, which they have in the past. We've heard them out there in the wee hours of the night, wee hours of the morning. So now you don't know what chemicals they're using, how much they're putting in, and that at their discretion, where with these other companies, they are regulated by the DNR. Thank you. Any other members? Can I come back up? Oh, yeah. okay. Trina Hart, 520 Kingview. Um, first, I was here, let me have a name before, I think an aqua weed control person was here and they were telling us how they were going to try to target specific weeds, the uh, invasive species. And um, I'm pretty sure they told us they were going to go in and um, find a specific weed and not injector roots or whatever and, and you know try and get those specific weeds out of, out of out of the way and they were going to maybe change it ever so often and see which ones are more invasive at certain times well we go out there and we see a boat come with a big old fire hose basically and just spray in the top of the water with this blue chemicals you don't know really what it is we're not trying to target one specific part they're just spraying the whole lake the lily pads are gone everything's gone there's no more fish around my dock i had some uh, Maybe little weeds around the dock of the you know bass to go to have like little shade or whatnot or ecosystem. They're gone. The duck, baby ducks are, were gone for a couple of years. They're just coming back. I think they seen breaks on it. It just like seems like all the fertilizer you put into there's fertilizer going in the water. It's probably fertilizing the weeds too. So a lot of things are coming together, and I think maybe the time frame they said we're going to have it. We've had it. Let's just we're going to take a break and see how it has reacted, and I don't think we have done that. We're just going to keep doing it and keep doing it because it's leaving people's boats like she's just like, 
it's more about the people now than the, the ecosystem and the animals and that were there before us. And you know, my, my grandparents been there since 1967, 68, when we were there, so it's like, anyway, that was one point. And um, anyway, uh, yeah, so can we just, you know, maybe have a break about that and maybe if we're gonna be specific on um, weed control, make it more specific, not just shooting a whole bunch of stuff across the water, which you don't know what it is, and people are getting rashes, my dog's getting rashes, can't go in the water. Thank you. Any other members of the public that would like to come up and speak? Sure. Yes, sir. I won't be too articulate because I just went through a couple of family emergencies, so I'll try to make my point. Kurt, I hope that you would see me. So I know we have costs involved here, which a lot of people are upset about in the downtime, obviously, at the lake. and and putting the chemicals in there and then some lawns have been hurt and some gardens have been watered and some of the residual effects of chemicals and the use of zero time has been well proven <coughs> and it does get absorbed by plant material and the ground. So if you keep doing it, you will keep propagating the problem. Um, it seems like also that the, the system just keeps on getting worse. So when we first had these conversations, it was three years and then turned into six years and now we're asking for 10 years. So it's like, why can't we just take a break and see what the ecology does when we leave it alone? We can always do this again. Nobody's stopping us from reissuing another SAD in another form. But we seem to be forced to want to continue to do this. I don't know if there's monetary gains or by a company that's probably standing to make well over $300,000 over the years from all of us. So um, we couldn't even raise the money to get the bridge a lot. But if you have the money, just sit there and kind of fly to wait. What we're really doing is sterilizing the lake, I think. Mm -hmm. Because yeah. the fish are dying. Yep. I had a dog, my kids' dogs, grew up on that lake, had never had a problem. He moves away, we start doing this. Now, five, six years later, they go in the lake and they get rashes every single time. Mm -hmm. It's not when they spray, it's all the time. And it's just, it just seems a little preposterous to continue to do things without proof. I see that we got less invasive species, but we have less, in, it, we have less habitat mm -hmm. for the fish. So everybody says we got better fishing. Well, because you can see through the water, <coughs> through the water. <coughs> so if there's less fish, comes less habitat, and we know that it's a food chain, so it affects not only the fish and the habitats there, but everything that surrounds and eats it too, are also ingesting these chemicals. We do not know the long-term effects I, I, you know, we, we, we sit there and wait for it. We don't get publicly told what the results of any testing are. Mm -hmm. I've never seen it. I've never seen the board or anybody of this trustee that it enabled this to come out and say, yeah, it's safe. Look it, here's the proof. Nobody's doing it for us. So, I mean, let's take some responsibility here until we get some answers. Because I, I thought I was the only one with dog problems, but I'm hearing it around and around, and it's, it's just concerning. So I don't understand why the urgent rush to continue to continue to continue. Ten point. How much time do I have? You said three minutes, right? Thirty seven five. <laughs> <laughs> I don't blame anybody here. Everybody wants a clean lake, everybody wants a nice environment, but it's not a swimming pool. It should be a swimming pool. You want a swimming pool, go throw your chlorine in it and bleach it out. I don't want to bleach the lake out. I've lived here 30 some plus years on multiple sides of the lake, and I don't want to see it destroyed anymore. Thank you. Thank you. Any other members? Thank you. Any other public comment? I'm 628 Tanview. Just got a question on how the breakdown of per property, what is this cost for the millage, and then uh, how's it broken down? Are they charging this fees to everyone as part of the association that's around our lake? That's really all I had to ask. <coughs> Any 
Any other public comments regarding the SAD? Can we can we step back up or no? Sure, Mary. Come on okay. If you have a question. This is, you know, just listening. I, Mary Reynolds, two 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 ten. You listening to the other people? I ran across the contract. You know that we had seven years ago. Um, so this is a contract for seven years. Now you guys are talking about changing this to a 10 year process. Is there another contract? Number one. Number two, somebody was talking about water samples. We were charged every year for water samples. Now, where are those water samples? Mm -hmm. You know, that was brought up in this discussion. So those are just two questions looking over the contract that we issued seven years ago. And Kimberly Reynolds, 1946 Lakeview. The people who are saying that this stuff is safe also told us it, would, it didn't need to go on forever. They told us at the time that, that, every, that the, the majority said that they were going to go with this, that it was only going to take a few years, and then it would be done. In fact, I think, if I recall correctly at the time, it was three or four years. I don't remember hearing seven years, but that's just my memory. I don't, I don't remember exactly, but the fact of the matter is that they said it was temporary. So if it's not going to be temporary, then it's not working. It keeps growing back. What's the point? It's not doing the job. All it's doing is filling the surface stuff. It's like mowing it. So if it's not fixing the problem, then there's no point in continuing to pay for the non-fix. Any other public comments regarding the SAD? I move to close the public hearing to discuss the establishment of the Clear Lake Long Lake, Tan Lake, uh, the establishment of the Clear Long Lake, to your objections to the SAD petition, the SAD project, and SAD cost estimate at 6.57 p.m. Second. I have a motion by Treasurer Ferrari and a second by Trustee Colvin. Are any questions? Hearing none, roll call. Treasurer Ferrari. Yes. Trustee Knoll. Yes. Trustee Payne. Yes. Trustee Colvin. Yes. Trustee Charles. Yes. Clerk Wright. Yes. And Supervisor Curtis. Yes. yes. Thank you. All right. <clears throat> Moving on to item 9, 9A, first reading of zoning ordinance 67A.030. Um, as recommended by the Township, uh, Oxford Township Planning Commission, attached is the first reading of the zoning ordinance text amendments for special land use, site plan review, and exterior lighting. Attached are the memos from Carlisle Wartman Consultants, and we have Mateo Pasalacqua here tonight uh, to answer any questions, but everything is summarized in the amendments in red. I move to set a second reading of possible adoption of Ordinance 67A.033 of October 9th, 2024, to our touch of Oxford regular meeting to amend Article 2 provisions, Article 4, Article 4 special land uses, Article 10 environmental provisions, Article 12 site plans, of the Church touch of Oxford zone of Ordinance 67A. Second. I have a motion by Treasurer Ferrari, a second by Trustee Knoll. Any questions? Hearing none, roll call. Clerk Wright, yes. Treasurer Ferrari, yes. Trustee Charles, yes. Trustee Colvin, yes. Trustee Nold, yes. Trustee Payne, yes. Supervisor Curtis, <clears throat> yes. Item 9B, first reading of Ordinance 67A.034. Board members, as recommended by the Oxford Township Planning Commission, attached to the first reading for zoning ordinance amendments in the addition of Section. 5.39 renewable energy facilities. Uh, again, Mateo Pasalacqua is here to answer any questions you may have. I move to set a second reading of possible adoption for the 678.034, the October 9th, 2024, Church Township Oxford Board Trustees regular meeting minute. The regular meeting, excuse me, to amend Article 2 definitions, Article 3 zoning district regulations, and add Section 5.39. Renewable energy facilities, the Charter Township Oxford Zone Ordinance 67A. Second. 
I have a motion by Treasurer Ferrari and a second by Trustee Noll. Are there any questions? Roll call. Trustee Payne. Yes. Trustee Colvin. Yes. Trustee Charles. Yes. Look right. Yes. Uh, Treasurer Ferrari. Yes. Trustee Noll. Yes. And Supervisor Curtis. Yes. Item 10, Fire Department. Chief, what do you have for us tonight? Uh, just a couple of things, just some informational uh, reminder that our annual open house will be on October 5th. It's a Saturday this year um, from 11 to 3. Uh, so everybody's welcome to come on out and look things over. One of the things you'll get to see is the new amb one of the new ambulances finally came in after over two and a, two and a half years. Uh, and it's set for decals and lettering and all that. And, uh, we hope to have it inspected by the state and in service within the next couple of weeks. The state is a, there is a process of bureaucracy and red tape uh, to get that through, but uh, we're used to it and uh, we're already get, getting things scheduled. Uh, so we should be good there. Um, and then lastly, uh, as of around one o'clock yesterday afternoon, the new McLaren emergency uh, room opened up to uh, EMS and we've already transported uh, three patients there um, since yesterday and between yesterday and today, uh, which while it's not great that we're, you know, we're getting called out, but the nice thing is uh, our turnaround time was minutes instead of being out of service for about two hours to transport either down to, you know, Pontiac or Rochester Hills or Troy. So uh, already we're seeing some benefit within a day. So I uh, just wanted you guys to know about that. And that's all I have. Thank you. Sure. Thank you, Chief. Uh, item 11, Sharp Engineering Report. Board members in your packet was a, a report from Engineer Sharp updating on several projects in the community. Do we have any questions for Engineer Sharp? He's in the audience tonight. We'll have him come up and answer him. My only comment is to say thank you. It's a nice, succinct report. You did it for him, okay. <laughs> Thanks, Jim. Item number 12, <laughs> unfinished business. Okay, here we go. 2025 budgets. I move to approve the recommended 2025 general fund budget. The revenues and expenditures balancing at $3,790,378. Based on the property tax military to be levied at 0 0.8776 mills. That's the spreadsheet's appendix of the minutes. Second. I have a motion by Treasurer Ferrari, a second by Trustee Noll. Are there any questions? Hearing none, roll call. Trustee Coleman. Yes. Trustee Payne? Yes. Trustee Noll. Yes. Treasurer Ferrari? Yes. Clerk Wright? Yes. Trustee Charles? Yes. And Supervisor Curtis? Yes. I move to approve the recommended 2025 road fund budget. With revenues and expenditures balancing at six hundred forty thousand dollars, tax and spreadsheets appendix to the minutes. Second, I have a motion by Treasurer Ferrari, a second by Trustee Noll. Are there any questions? Hearing none, roll call. Trustee Payne. Yes. Trustee Noll. Yes. Treasurer Ferrari. Yes. Clerk Wright. Yes. Trustee Charles. Yes. Trustee Colvin. Yes. And Supervisor Curtis. Yes. I move to approve the recommended twenty twenty five fire department fund budget. Revenues and expenditures balancing at eight million eight hundred ninety-three thousand four hundred twenty-two dollars, contingent upon voter approval, the proposed property tax millage rate of five point two five mills that will appear on the November fifth, twenty twenty-four general election ballot. Attaches purchases and penix of the minutes. Second. I have a motion by Treasurer Ferrari and a second by Trustee Noll. Are there any questions? Hearing none. Roll call. Trustee Noll. Yes. Treasurer Ferrari. Yes. Clerk Wright. Yes. Trustee Charles. Yes. Trustee Colvin. Yes. Trustee Payne. Yes. Supervisor Curtis. Yes. I move to approve the recommended 2025 police contracting fund budget with revenues and expenditures balancing at $5,345,496 based on the property tax millage rate to be levied at 3.7831 mills. That's a spreadsheet of banks to the minutes. Second. I'll second that. I have a motion by Treasurer Ferrari, a second by Trustee Noll. Are there any questions? Hearing none, roll call. 
Treasurer Ferrari. Yes. Clerk Wright. Yes. Trustee Charles. Yes. Trustee Colvin. Yes. Trustee Payne. Yes. Trustee Knoll. Yes. Supervisor Curtis. Yes. I move to approve the recommended 2025 Parks and Recreation Fund budget. The revenues and expenditures balance at $1,960,000. Based on the property tax bills rate to be levied at 0 0.9626 mills. That's just precious appendix to the minutes. Second. I have a motion by Treasurer Ferrari, a second by Trustee Knoll. Are there any questions? Hearing none, roll call. Clerk Wright, yes. Trustee Charles. Yes. Trustee Colvin. Yes. Trustee Payne. Yes. Trustee Knoll. Yes. Treasurer Ferrari. Yes. Supervisor Curtis. Yes. I move to approve the recommended 2025 cemetery maintenance fund budget with revenues and expenditures balancing at $210,000. That's as price as appendix to the minutes. Second. I have a motion by Treasurer Ferrari, a second by Trustee Knoll. Are there any questions? Hearing none, roll call. Trustee Charles. Yes. Trustee Colvin. Yes. Trustee Payne. Yes. Trustee Knoll. Yes. Treasurer Ferrari. Yes. Clerk Wright. Yes. And Supervisor Curtis. Yes. I move to approve the recommended 2025 telecommunications fund budget with revenues and expenditures balancing at $15,000. Catch a spreadsheet's appendix to the minutes. Second. I have a motion by Treasurer Ferrari, a second by Trustee Knoll. Are there any questions? Hearing none, roll call. Trustee Colvin. Yes. Trustee Payne. Yes. Trustee Knoll. Yes. Treasurer Ferrari. Yes. Clerk Wright. Yes. Trustee Charles. Yes. And Supervisor Curtis. Yes. I move to approve the recommended 2025 billing department fund budget with revenues and expenditures balancing at 516165 That's the spreadsheet as appendix to the minutes. Second. I have a motion by Treasurer Ferrari. A second by Trustee Knoll. Are there any questions? Hearing none, roll call. Trustee Payne. Yes. Trustee Knoll. Yes. Treasurer Ferrari. Yes. Clerk Wright. Yes. Treasurer, no, Treasurer, uh, Trustee Charles. Yes. Trustee Colvin. Yes. And Supervisor Curtis. Yes. I move to approve the recommended 2025 cable TV fund budget with revenues and expenditures balancing $280,000. $275. That's the spreadsheet's appendix of the minutes. Second. I have a motion by Treasurer Ferrari, a second by Trustee Knoll. Are there any questions? Hearing none, roll call. Trustee Knoll. Yes. Treasurer Ferrari. Yes. Work right. Yes. Trustee Charles. Yes. Trustee Colvin. Yes. Trustee Payne. Yes. Supervisor Curtis. Yes. I move to approve the recommended 2025 safety path fund budget with revenues and expenditures balancing at $349,000. That's the spreadsheet's appendix to the minutes. Second. I have a motion by Treasurer Ferrari, a second by Trustee Knoll. <clears throat> Are there any questions? Hearing none, roll call. Treasurer Ferrari. Yes. Clerk Wright. Yes. Trustee Charles. Yes. Trustee Colvin. Yes. Trustee Payne. Yes. Trustee Knoll. Yes. Supervisor Curtis. Yes. I move to approve the recommended 2025 Holly and Trail Aid Management Council fund budget with revenues and expenditures balancing at $137,990. Yes, the spreadsheet is appendix to the minutes. Second. I have a motion by Treasurer Ferrari, a second by Trustee Knoll. Are there any questions? Hearing none, roll call. Clerk Wright, yes. Trustee Charles. Yes. Trustee Colvin. Yes. Trustee Payne. Yes. Trustee Knoll. Yes. Treasurer Ferrari. Yes. Supervisor Curtis. Yes. I move to approve the recommended 2025 North Oakland Transportation Authority budget. The revenues and expenditures balancing at 11 million. $264,781. That the spreadsheet is the appendix of the minutes. Second. I have a motion by Treasurer Ferrari, a second by Trustee Knoll. Are there any questions? Hearing none, roll call. Trustee Charles. Yes. Trustee Colvin. Yes. Trustee Payne. Yes. Trustee Knoll. Yes. Treasurer Ferrari. Yes. Clerk Wright. Yes. And Supervisor Curtis. Yes. I move to approve the recommended. 2025 Oxford Public Library budget with revenues and expenditures balancing at $1,672,751 based on the property tax millage rate to be levied of 0.6224 mills and 0.6641 mills equal to 1.365 mills. That's your spreadsheet's appendix of the minutes. Second. I have a motion by Treasurer Ferrari, a second by Trustee Knoll. Are there any questions? Hearing none, roll call. Trustee Colvin. Yes. Trustee Payne. Yes. Trustee Knoll. Yes. Treasurer Ferrari. Yes. Clerk Wright. Yes. Trustee Charles. Yes. Supervisor Curtis. Yes. Item 12B.
2024 Parks and Recreation Debt Millage Rate Approval. Treasurer Ferrari. I'll make a motion to set the Parks and Recreation 2024 Debt Millage Rate at 0 0.1900 of a mill and, and authorize it to be placed on the December 2024 tax roll. Second. I have a motion by Treasurer Ferrari, a second by Trustee Knoll. Are there any questions? Hearing none, roll call. Trustee Payne. Yes. Trustee Knoll. Yes. Treasurer Ferrari. Yes. Clerk Wright. Yes. Trustee Charles. Yes. Trustee Colvin. Yes. Supervisor Curtis. Yes. Uh, item 12C, the 2024 tax rate request, the L-4029 approval. Treasurer Ferrari. I'll make a motion that the following milk rates to be levied and collected December 1, 2024. The general property tax on all real and personal property within the township upon the current tax rule and allocated millage of 0 0.8776 uh, of a mill for township operations and voter authorized millage of 0 0.9626 of a mill for parks and recreation, 3.7831 mills for police contracting, unincorporated portion of the township, uh, point, uh, and 0. <coughs> Zero point six two two four of a mill and zero point six six four one of a mill, the Oxford Public Library, and zero point one nine zero zero of a mill for parts of recreation bond debt. Second. I have a motion by Treasurer Ferrari, a second by Trustee Knoll. Are there any questions? Hearing none, roll call. Trustee Knoll. Yes. Treasurer Ferrari. Yes. Clerk Wright. Yes. Trustee Charles. Yes. Trustee Colvin. Yes. Trustee Payne. Yes. Supervisor Curtis. Yes. Thank you very much, Treasurer Ferrari and Trustee Knowles. Uh, okay, item 12D, Cedar Long Tan Lake Special Assessment District Resolution Number 2. Clerk Wright. Yes, um, I was wondering if I could get a, an excuse on people get a hold in my office. <clears throat> sure. Okay, thank you. Run in there. We'll take a two minute break here. Okay, clerk Wright is back. He's got his stuff and we're ready to go. I recorded nine concerns on the Clear Long Tan Lake Special Assessment District. But first I want uh, clerk Wright to explain uh, 
pretty much what an SAD is and does and what the township board responsibility for those SADs are. So go ahead, Clerk Gray. Okay, sure. Um, this SAD is a special assessment district and the majority of the people in this room are already exposed to or have been exposed to that. And what happens is that a uh, petition is circulated within the township for those that are interested in, in getting, in this case, aquatic weeds treated in certain lakes. Once the petitions are returned to us signed, we forward those over to our engineer to determine the boundary area and the land area of those that sign the petitions to determine whether or not the land area is over 50% of the area of the SAD being requested to be treated for aquatic weeds in this case. So once we receive that affirmative from the engineer, then we proceed on to continue with the SAD process. The first step in the process is to have the initial intent to proceed with the SAD. So once we know we have the minimum requirements, we proceed on to uh, go with the SAD to get that in place. In this case here, we received probably about 70% affirmative petitions to move this SAD forward. So we have a signed contract from the uh, petition circulator, and that was, as far as I know, that was given to the homeowners to let them know what this, the estimated cost is of the project, and that and we're at that point now where we are going to approve or potentially approve a resolution to authorize the supervisor to uh, create the special assessment district role. And from there, if this goes any further, the role will be created in a, at our October meeting, then we will accept the role and then we'll set a public hearing at the November meeting to actually approve that role. And at that meeting, if the board so chooses to move forward, that's the time if you wanna protest your assessment, you need to appear in person or provide a written explanation of why you don't think you should be assessed and you, you have to do that in order to go to the Michigan Tax Tribunal. I don't know the process at the tribunal, but that is the process that you would have to go through to uh, protest what would probably be assessed against you. So I don't know if that explains it enough for you to understand the process. Um, if not, um, I don't have the gamble, so I, can't, I can answer the questions that I wrote down. Um, so hopefully that will help you before you leave. If not, um, I'm, I'm open to give you the information I can give you uh, for that. Um, I know there was some concerns about, a lot of concerns about chemical treatment in the lake. Uh, there's muck on my property in my lake in that uh, itself. So I not no expert on this subject. Um, that's why these companies are in business for that. And I don't know for a fact, but I would say that they wouldn't be treating the, the lake with chemicals that they are not FDA or uh, you know environmentally safe, eco-safe there. So um, I know that there was a contract brought for the um, seven-year plan. I would imagine it would be the same. And it looks like there's about 15 chemicals in there. I mean, one says water testing, so that's probably not a chemical. But um, I, I don't have those answers. That's something that uh, that's something that the company's going to have to answer answer on that. But I, I don't see them as treating the lake with anything that wouldn't be legal on that. Um, other questions that came about that I wrote down, and hopefully the board can fill in the blanks if I miss any. Um, were there a lot of those concerns that I wrote down were based upon the actual concern about harming the fish life in the waters uh, where we taking water samples, was there another contract? We only had one cat contract presented to us, so that's what we, we accepted at this point. And the reason we do that is we allow you to, to create the contract, otherwise the Township Board is authorized to do that, and we do that because we know that you're going to get the contract that you want versus us giving you the contract that we would we would approve. Yeah, what Clerk Wright is saying is when the petition went around to all landowners, 
and whoever signed it didn't sign it, didn't see it. When they ascertained over 51% of the uh, landowners to have the special assessment district created, they chose the contractor. They chose the contractor with the approved chemicals. No one on this board has anything to do with the testing of how deep the weeds are, uh, what, what they're putting in there. We, we have no control over that. Our control is, is that when you come forward with 51% of the landowners stating they want something, we collect the tax money, the money for that contract through the taxes, and we pay the contractor that whoever created the SAD did. We don't go out and uh, test the water. We don't go out and test the depth of the weeds. We do not know the scientific end to this. Um, that's not what we do in an SAD. In an SAD, everybody in the room that owns property or the people that aren't here tonight have that right to oppose it by not signing the SAD agreement. And uh, when that contract is selected, that's when you have your concerns brought forward with those. Now, a point that was brought up is if 20% of the landowners were to come here and complain about it, we would have to address that concern. We don't have that. So what we can answer for you tonight is the tax roll, how many square feet or what, what role you're being put on. But scientific data, we don't do that. Are we concerned? Yes, we're concerned. We're always concerned. That's why we rely on EGLE. That's why we rely on the DNR. That's why we rely on uh, the chemical companies that are putting this in there for them to do. But we can't tell you scientific data on this stuff. We can tell you that we're going to charge you this much based on your property square footage and it's going to be in your taxes and we have two public hearings uh, before you have an opportunity to go to your tax tribunal and uh, report against that. So this board does nothing with the scientific data. Our board only approves taking tax dollar assignments to your taxes I'm sorry, SAD dollars to your taxing assignments and collecting the money to pay for the contractor that your SAD, the Special Assessment District, has hired to do this chemical application. So a lot of the questions that were asked, how deep are the weeds, I don't know. Is this the same as Clear Lake and Squaw, Squaw Paint, whatever it is? Scientific data to the end of this, we can't answer that question. A uh, company doing it, uh, I know that Eagle and uh, DNR all have to have them licensed and they check their products. Um, can you take a break for a while? Don't sign the SAD. Get your neighbors to not sign it. Uh, get your neighbors to protest it. But, but we don't have that information, nor do we have, have that right. Uh, Cost, downtime, dogs sick, we, we, we don't answer those questions. We don't have those answers. Um, no one from the board has ever been on the lake. I don't know. I don't go on Tan Lake. I don't go on Clear Lake. I don't go on Squaw Lake. I don't go on Lake Orion. I don't go on Lake St. Clair. Um, breakdown per property. Uh, Curtis, you want to? I can, that? Yeah, I can address that. Uh, what, what you have here is you have 126 properties around the lake. The 127 the ones of township owned property, so that's exempt from an SAD. Um, but, but also you have five other outlots, and those outlots are divided up into certain parts of the land that have access to the outlot. So they are assessed a percentage of that outlot cost. So, when this is all said and done, you have upwards of about 190 properties that will be getting assessed on the SAD. Um, Mary Kay subdivision, uh, they have 51 people, property owners, that have rights to that outlot. And some of them don't live on the lake. And they'll get, be getting assessed probably about a $5 bill, plus or minus. The average cost for somebody on the lake is going to be roughly about $225 
that's years two through ten. But in year one, it's going to be a little higher because there's administrative costs that are involved. It's a $3,000 bill. That goes for your publication costs. That goes for engineering, legal, for uh, the paper costs, the mailing that was sent to you. So those are costs that are involved to get the SED for, for this to get in place. So you're looking at roughly, like I said, $225 for years two through 10, a little higher for year one if it, if it goes through. The outlots, if you don't live on the lake, you're going to get assessed anywhere from, like I say, like $5, maybe $12 on that. So um, it, by that not being paid by the association has increased the cost, the time to actually get the SAD in place. So that, I don't know if that answered the question as far as what the estimated costs are, but that's pretty much what you're looking for. The stuff here also is in my office. If you want to come in and look at it, I'm happy to sit down with you. You take a look at it. And I'll give you the information that I have. At this time, this board, again, is just looking to ensure that the tax roll was created correctly, that the supplier or your contracted weed control is charging a certain amount, and we have to break that off according to the property you own. While we are all concerned with the environment on this board, the homework needs to be done prior to coming to this board. This board addresses the tax, not the scientific data. So I'm sorry to tell you that, but it's the fact and it's what we have to deal with. Can I, um, oh, sorry. Hey, you think, sorry, Jacob. The main thing about all SADs, at least at our township board level, they're all resident driven. They're not imposed by us. Township board's not saying, okay, everybody on, you know, Cedar Lake, Long Lake, Tech, you must pay for this. It's not imposed by us at all. It's brought to us. And as long as they have 51%, we proceed. We've got an SAD for Cedar, Long, Tan Lake. There's one for uh, Squaw Lake and Clear Lake. There's one for Lake Mickelson. Each of those SADs, residents in that area banded together and say, Township Board, we got 51%. We want you to handle this for us. And that's our function. I'll, I'll address some oh. questions. Come on up to the mic, Mary, please. All right. Well, I guess this is um, Curtis, you know, the SAD that you're talking about. The SAD that I have in my hand has an expiration date of seven years past the year 2018. Okay? Right. I was not presented, uh, you know, at my house with an extension for an SAD. So one of the questions is, where, where is this new SAD coming from? Okay. Secondly, the contract. You know, the contract that I have in my hand has a date of June 8th, um, 2017. That's the end of the contract. Okay. Where's the new contract? How can you how can you assess us for a contract that is under an expiration date? Okay, Mary. We have a new contract. Okay. Presented so, by the people that went around and garnered the 51% uh, to get the SAD done. So there was a new SAD. Okay. And this SAD you have in your hand, Mary, that right. will be expiring. Correct. If that expires, then the process, in this case, is starting all over again. So you are you are signed up, not you necessarily, but, but this is the contract that is, that is going to be subject to being renewed as a new SAD for a 10-year period. As, pre as presented to us uh -huh. by, by the circulator, as also indicated by the majority of those landowners that signed off, said yes, move forward for us, if you would. Okay, so if I have to understand, you know, you correctly, that there has been a person walking in the neighborhood getting getting signatures from the residents. That's my understanding. Okay, that's, I, I know a couple of my neighbors are here. Did you have a person stop at your house and ask? No. No? No. no. Neighbors? Anyone? Mary? Yeah. When, when a petitioner goes around and knows they have over 51%, a lot of them don't go to every they neighbor. They stop? Okay. They stop. Well, that's fine. That, I, mean, I just want to make what they certain do. that it's not just, you know, a continuation, you know, without the proper, proper procedure. The form, all the petitions are brought to Clerk Wright's office. Okay. You can see the addresses that said yes. 
You can see the addresses. That said no. <laughs> or if, are they if even they were, talk? if okay. they were conceived. You know, I, I board democracy. <laughs> I, I go along with what the vote is, but I want to make certain that things are done correctly. Okay, thank okay. you. And Kimberly Reynolds, thanks for your time. Yes. Um, what are these outlots? Is that like Gill and Keith and Gibson and Hilberg and all of these other roads yes. that are running all up the lake that have access to those public lots that are at the end of their street on the lake? No, that, that, no that, that's a different SAD. That is the one that's, that is actually in place for PLM doing that spring. What is PLM? PLM is the company doing spraying. I don't know if it's just handful. This is the Cedar Long Tan Lakes you're talking about. Yeah, on Clear Lake, Lake and Clear and Lake. No, What are the outlaws? I want to, because are the people that are on Keys, for example, have legal rights back when there was homeowners I'm association. Gonna, I'm going to interrupt you. Right? We're talking about Cedar Lake, Long Lake, and Tan Lake right now. If we have a question on okay. Clear Lake and Keith and all that, Please address, come on up to the office, talk to Clerk Wright. He can give you all the role for that SAD. Okay. Is that, does that address my question? Yes, Clerk Wright. Yeah, you, you mentioned the outlots. There's actually five outlots that are involved. One is Mary K Sub, that's on Tanview. Okay. The other one is Aqua View Sub, which is also on Tanview. And there is Tan Lake Shores, which is off Brookfield. And then there's a Lake Park Homeowners Association outlet, which has actually two outlots on it. So and those are out, your outlots. Outlots are the public access. The public on access the lake to the, for that are deeded, deeded to, to those homeowners within those platted subdivisions. Okay. And they are the ones that, that uh, have the access, and those are the ones that either they're going to get assessed just for the outlot, or they're going to get assessed for the actual lake frontage. Right. And also the outlaw because it's a, it's a dual access. And they have right to sign that position if they were not. They, Correct. So That's we could exactly. we could in essence go to all of those homes and get a petition ourselves that is higher in number than the one that was turned in. We don't know if you can or can't. I, all we do is we get the petition. I know, I'm trying to understand what where these numbers come. If that if let's just give it a round number, a hundred people on the lake. All of them, just all together, 100 people. 51 people say we want to do it. That's your majority. If, but I'm betting that all of the people in those outlaws don't know that they're being assessed anything. But if we were to go to all of them and get our own petition that was had a higher number than the one that was already turned in saying yay, does that count? Is that what you guys need? to make your decision is a, a petition that we can turn in either in October or November to counter the, the petition that was already sent in. Yeah, in my opinion, the answer is no, because your outlet only has so much frontage to it. And, and if you got 51 signatures of Mary Kay for the outlet, chances are that that isn't going to be enough to be a, be a concern to the SAD area that's now under consideration to move forward. Yeah, I used to live over on Gibson, so I understand the Clear Lake Squaw Lake one. Uh, what they did, at least in, in that area, is they took those of us on the outlots out of the equation. They absorbed that amongst the entire SAD. So when I was on Gibson, I had never signed it because my little outlot at the end of the street was absorbed as part of everybody on Clear Lake Squaw Lake. I, I'm almost sure that's probably what they're doing here as well. And even if we weren't all to have signed, we'd have one vote on one little piece of property. It wouldn't be compared to you know Christ the King or... Uh, Lake Point, who owns half the lake. Our little 51 for one little lot wouldn't mean anything compared to Lake Point, who signs and owns half the lake. I think that's the Clear Lake, Squaw Lake issue. You get Lake Point to sign it, you know, I mean, or, Lake, yeah, you get Lake Point to sign the petition, you're in. Okay, Mr. Chair, Mr. Chair. Yes, Trustee Noll. I'd like to jump in on this. Uh, I got involved with this seven years ago, got involved with this four years ago. <clears throat> There's two tasks to this. There's a process task and a there's a process and there's a task. My problem is not with the task. My problem is that I have issue is with the process. The notification of all the residents that are impacted. All the residents have not been notified that, that this impacts. The, other, the second part of this process is the financial reporting and the feedback from the finances involved 
as well as any samples and any outcomes of progress on the lake, no feedback has been given to the homeowners. I feel that is, is very evident and tonight. We have folks come in that have no idea because of the lack of communication of the cost, the tax, and the outcome. Let's talk about the task. The task is the weed control, okay? I live on the lake. I was just in the lake an hour and a half ago. It is being accomplished. The weeds are dying. Things have been accomplished. Whether we need to continue that or not is totally up to the experts. I'm not an expert, but we are managing the weeds. The township can take action if it so desires, I believe, to put ordinances in place that when these SADs come forth, all the property owners in the SAD should be notified officially. There should be checks and balances. Sorry. <laughs> there should be checks and balances of reporting to the residents who have to pay the bills, whether it's financial, whether it's accomplishments of the tasks they're doing of the weed control itself. So those are things that I believe the township can look into to do to help resolve these problems and help best manage the SADs within the township. And that what this is? That's your notice? Yeah. I don't know what that is. I don't know what for the public hearing. I move to approve resolution number two to establish a Cedar Lake, Long Lake, and Tan Lake special assessment district as presented. I have a motion by Treasurer Ferrari, a second by Supervisor Curtis. Questions? Trustee Colvin. Actually, since Attorney Alice came up, mm -hmm. her, if, uh, once we get a petition from residents and more than 50% have signed it, what is our obligation as a board? Yeah, so your obligation, first of all, is to notice everyone in the SAD district, and that goes to Trustee Nold's point. When a public hearing is held on the district, the actual project itself, all the things that we're discussing tonight, every single resident in that district is required to receive notice by law. Um, and I think someone in the audience actually said, isn't this the notice we received? So they should have. We, we did that. Yeah. And, I, and, I, and Mr. Supervisor, correct me if I'm wrong, I just have one comment. It seems like it's a done deal. 51% yeah. have already voiced the opinion that this needs to be done. Yes. I'm after the process, the management of the process. The township, I believe, needs to be involved with that. Management of the cost of that, management of the, of the feedback of what the activity is being done to all the homeowners, not just a select few. Thank you. So I can expand on that a little bit as well. The public hearing tonight is an opportunity as well for residents to come and be heard and actually object to the SAD district, which we've heard some of that tonight. And if they actually get up to 20%, um, I want to be 100% accurate, so I'm going to read from the statute. So it's, um, if they get 20% um, objections by the record owners of land constituting 20% of the total land area in the proposed special assessment district, that would prevent the board from moving forward with approval of the SAD tonight. Um, so there is a process. They do get notification and they have the opportunity to come and object. And if they get to that, if the prop property owners in the SAD reach that number, then the board is prohibited from moving forward with that approval. I, I'm not debating yeah. that. I've read that. Hold I, on, hold on. Attorney Ellis, mm -hmm. did we do everything that we're supposed to do? It's my understanding that everyone in the SAD district was noticed appropriately in accordance with okay. law. We are not in the weed control business. We do not go to you and say, we are going to control your weeds. We are not going to look in the checkbook of your weed controller to see what they're spending their money on, how much they're paying their people to do this job. We do not do that. The state does that. Mm -hmm. The state does it through requirements of licensing, of chemical checking. All we do here is say that your petition has been granted for us to collect your tax money to pay your supplier. We're a facilitator. We are a facilitator of the funds to ensure the person doing the work gets paid. 
Yes, ma'am. Did you just say that if we have 20% of the landowners, 20%, the land owners, that we yes. Put a stop to what you've already Yes. Heard. Tonight. You would have to have those objections put in tonight. Not yours. Which lake are you talking about? I'm talking about Clear Swamp. That's we're on Cedar Lawn. I That's know, it. but I okay. can't keep up with what you're talking about. There's we're only on one lake. Of water. It's only divided by a bridge. That's the truth. Don't start that bridge talk. <laughs> <laughs> they said it up that way. Yeah, yeah, yeah I didn't say it. You know, several of us didn't even know there was a new SAP. You know, I'm relying on information that I would say <coughs> that everything is done. You know, the only reason I knew that something was coming up was because of the letter you sent. So uh, it's a moot point, you know, unless what John Nolt, you know, mentioned that, you know, there's got to be. I have a motion on the floor and I'll call the roll, please. Trustee Colvin? Yes. Trustee Payne? Yes. Trustee Nold? No. Trustee Ferrari? Yes. Fort Wright? Yes. Trustee Charles? Yes. And Supervisor Curtis? Yes. Item 12E. Oxford Addison Youth Request for 2025 Contribution. I move to waive the requirement that the Oxford Addison Youth Assistance provide an audited financial statement <clears throat> the most recent year on their request for a contribution form. LK 12,890.47 of 2025 general fund funds, Oxford Addison Youth Assistance is 12,890.47 amount to be expensed. The 2025 general fund account 101. 695881.002 Contributions Youth Assistance. So, I have a motion by Treasurer Ferrari, a second by Trustee Colvin. Are there any questions? Hearing none, roll call. Trustee Charles? Yes. Clerk Wright? Yes. Treasurer Ferrari? Yes. Trustee Knoll? Yes. Trustee Payne? Yes. Trustee Colvin? Yes. Supervisor Curtis? Yes. Item 13A. Set the public hearing for Great Lakes Senior Living Communities, LLC, for issuance of tax-exempt bonds. Clerk Wright? Yes, let me get to the page here. Okay, uh, we were contacted by the attorney from Miller Canfield that Great Lakes Senior Living Communities would like to host a public hearing at the October <clears throat> meeting because they're in the process of wanting to refund their bonds. And the reason why is because they are the owners of Independence Village in Oxford, and they have to have the host community have a public hearing to actually move forward through the process to meet their SEC or whatever uh, their, their requirements are. So, so with that, uh, we were presented with a resolution to, to approve to actually set the public hearing for the October meeting. So with that, I'll move to approve the resolution calling public hearing regarding the proposed issuance by the Arizona Industrial Development Authority of Tax Exempt Bonds, Great Lakes Senior Living Communities, LLC, and schedule a public hearing for the October 9, 2024 Charter Township of Oxford Board of Trustees regular meeting. Any cost, including the public hearing publication <coughs> requirements associated with this request for public hearing, shall be reimbursed by Great Lakes Senior Living Communities, LLC. Second for discussion. I have a motion by Clerk Wright and a second by Treasurer Ferrari. Treasurer Ferrari, you have a question? Yep, Supervisor Curtis, myself, and Clerk Wright have been talking to the Great Lakes Living Communities along with Attorney Ellis. There's been a suggestion that we have an amendment to the original agreement uh, for this process, so we'd like to have that. It's also part of the package for October 9th, 2024. It will be. Thank you. Just want that noted. Okay. Roll call. Trustee Colvin. Yes. Trustee Payne? Yes. Trustee Knoll? Yes. Trustee Ferrari? Yes. Clerk Wright? Yes. Trustee Charles? Yes. And Supervisor Curtis? Yes. Okay, item 13B. Uh, Chief Majestic of the Fire Department uh, requested mm -hmm. updates be made to the Township's Support Emergency Operations Plan. The changes include updating names and contact information, correcting grammatical errors, and adding the Oxford Public Library as a source of shelter. I move to approve the resolution to adopt the Oxford Township Support Emergency Plan Operations Plan dated September 12, 2024, as presented. Authorized Supervisor Jack Curtis, Clerk Curtis Wright, Building Official Tim London, and Communications at Grant Manager C.J. Carnacchio sign the Oxford Township Support Emergency Operations Plan on behalf of the township. Second. 
I have a motion by Treasurer Ferrari, a second by Trustee Knoll. Are there any questions? Hearing none, roll call. Clerk Wright, yes. Treasurer Ferrari, yes. Trustee Charles, yes. Trustee Knoll, yes. Trustee Payne, yes. Trustee Colvin, yes. Supervisor Curtis, yes. Item 13C, Procurement Policy Amendment. Uh, board members, um, in our quest for grant uh, apprehension by our grants and communications manager, our procurement policy, in order to ensure compliance with the federal requirements for the grant <clears throat> eligibility, needed the paragraph added that's in your package tonight. So with that, I move to approve the amendment to section six of the Oxford Township procurement policy for purposes of compliance with federal grant standards and authorized township clerk uh, Curtis Wright to certify and file the same. Second. Motion by Supervisor Curtis, a second by Treasurer Ferrari. Are there any questions? Roll call. Treasurer Ferrari. Yes. Trustee Noll. Yes. Trustee Payne. Yes. Trustee Coleman. Yes. Trustee Charles. Yes. Clerk Wright. Yes. Supervisor Curtis. Yes. Uh, item 13D, employee handbook amendment adding employee sick, sick time act language. Uh, in July 2024, the Michigan Supreme Court ruled that the state legislature's action on paid sick leave initiative was unconstitutional. This ruling reinstates the employer requirement for paid medical sick leave effective February 21st, 2025. Based on this requirement, uh, the employee handbook needs to be updated and we need to have the personnel committee work with uh, the Kelly firm to update that. I move that the Oxford Township Personnel Committee work with the Kelly law firm to update the Oxford Township employee handbook, include the required language to comply with the Earned Sick Time Act 2018 by the updated Oxford Township Employee Handbook for consideration of approval at a future Charter Township Oxford Board Trustees meeting prior to the February 21st, 2025 Earned Sick Time Act effective date. Second. I have a motion by Treasurer Ferrari, a second by Trustee Knoll. Are there any questions? Hearing none, roll call. Trustee Knoll. Yes. Trustee Payne. Yes. Trustee Colvin. Yes. Trustee Charles. Yes. Treasurer Ferrari. Yes. Work right. Yes. Supervisor Curtis. Yes. Okay, short-term disability agreement. Uh, Ryan Root, our uh, Oxford Township Health Insurance representative from BHS Insurance, <clears throat> marketed our short-term disability. Attached to the uh, board packet tonight was comparisons of several companies, including our current carrier. Uh, Ryan recommended entering into a new agreement with One America. Even though Mutual of Omaha is the lowest, I would recommend One America the reason being is they're very easy to do business with and their customer support <clears throat> is superior over others. We have business with all characters, carriers, characters, on the spreadsheet. One America has the best service of them all, Mutual of Omaha being second. Kansas Life is a great carrier as well, but with a difference in premium, it's hard to, not to understand why we would be switching. That's a quote from Ryan. I moved to authorize BHS Insurance to terminate the short-term disability insurance agreement, Kansas City Life Insurance Company, effective on the earliest date possible, and to approve entering into a short-term disability insurance agreement with One America Insurance Company, authorize Supervisor Jack Curtis to sign any necessary documents on behalf of the Charter Township of Oxford. Second. I have a motion by Treasurer Ferrari, a second by Trustee Knoll. Are there any questions? Hearing none, roll call. Trustee Payne. Yes. Trustee Knoll. Yes. Trustee Colvin. Yes. Trustee Ferrari. Yes. Clerk Wright. Yes. Trustee Charles. Yes. Supervisor Curtis. Yes. Item 13F, canvas of the August 6, 2024 primary election. Clerk Wright. Yes, in your packet, board members, are the results of the August 6, 2024 primary election that was certified by the Oakland County Board of Canvassers. Uh, the information is quite lengthy, but it covered everything that was on the local August 6th ballot. So with that, I'll move to approve the canvas of votes for the August 6th, 2024 primary election. The Charter Township of Oxford is presented 
and to include them as an attachment to the minutes. Second. I have a motion by Clerk Wright, a second by Treasurer Ferrari. Are there any questions? Hearing none, roll call. Clerk Wright, yes. Treasurer Ferrari, yes. Trustee Charles, yes. Trustee Nold, yes. Trustee Payne, yes. Trustee Colvin, yes. Supervisor Curtis, yes. Okay, Treasurer Ferrari, would you like to talk about the 2023-2024 EVIP grant funding, please? Uh, yes, board members, as you know, each year we been getting EVIP monies from the state. Uh, the uh, amount we've done in the past that we split amongst other taxing units, uh, after we've paid our amount that we've paid to Metrix for the services they provided for the state reporting. Supposedly next year we, we do not have to do that reporting. We won't have that invoice from Metrix anymore. I moved to authorize jo Treasurer Joseph G. Ferrari, sign a one-year subscription contract invoice with Metrix LLC of 3,711 or to meet the state of Michigan reporting requirements, Secure Economic Vitality Incentive Program EVIP funding. It's further understood that the 3,711 fee will be subtracted from the 67,306 EVIP grant, leaving 63,595 to be distributed to the Oxford Township local taxing units based on 2023 township millage rates of $1,294 designated to the Oxford Township Fire Fund to help pay for its various applicable programs. Second. I have a motion by Treasurer Ferrari, a second by Trustee Knoll. Are there any questions? We shouldn't be doing this next year, should we? Well, we won't have to pay me Ah, that's right. <laughs> Roll call. Treasurer Ferrari. Yes. Work right. Yes. Trustee Charles. Yes. Trustee Knoll. Yes. Trustee Goldman. Yes. Trustee Payne. Yes. And Supervisor Curtis. Yes. Board members, it was asked by uh, Trustee Charles, we have a moment of silence for 9-11 remembrance. So if we'd all please stand, pay our respects to the flag for a minute. Thank you. All right, item number 15, um, public comment. Again, uh, at this time, the public can come up and make comment. So are there any members of the public that would like to come up and comment? Seeing none. Item number 16, Board of Trustee Comments. I'll start with Trustee Colvin, please. Uh, nothing at this time. Trustee Payne? Nothing for me. Trustee Knoll? Thank you, but no thank you. Treasurer Ferrari? Uh, just a reminder that the property tax due date is Monday, September 16th, 2024. Before interest charges are accrued the next day. Okay. Clerk Wright? No comment. Trustee Charles? Just a reminder that uh, Saturday is no, ha no has day. If you have uh, hazardous materials you'd like to drop off down at Pontiac, uh, bring them down there instead of pouring them in the backyard. Thank you, sir. I have no comments. I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second. I have a motion by Treasurer Ferrari, a second by Trustee Colvin. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, 